Hey everyone, my name is Enam Jordan. If you are new here, welcome back to my channel. I am a licensed esthetician, a licensed aesthetics instructor, and the owner and creator of Cardicay, where I create, produce, and distribute all natural products. So today, I'm gonna show you guys how I make my organic, all natural, cold pressed soap. I get so many questions about how it's made, what I do, how is it made natural. So I'm gonna answer all those questions for you and give you guys a bomb recipe for coconut vanilla soap. Are you ready? Disclaimer, this is not a beginner friendly soap. And no shade to those milk and pour people, but this is an intermediate or advanced type of cold processed soap. So if you are not familiar with lye, how to handle sodium hydroxide, how to weigh your oils and fats against lye, this is not the recipe for you. However, you can still enjoy watching how I make you guys this soap. The first thing you need to make any kind of soap, whether it's all natural, organic, or chemical soap, you need lye, which is sodium hydroxide. So lye is very dangerous to work with so if you don't have experience working with lye i suggest that you do not use lye you can get a milk and pour based soaps where you can create your own flavors and scents but to make it from scratch is very hard to do so when you're dealing with lye it gets to 200 degrees when you add water to it so you're going to make sure you have chemical resistant gloves don't use regular gloves it has to be chemical resistant it will burn your skin if you don't know how to properly use it you'll also need goggles to protect your eyes and you'll need a mask so that you don't inhale the fumes. Now, lye is just mixed with water, but I do add coconut water to mine for extra hydration. Um, so you'll just need your lye, your water that you're going to mix it with. You'll always need a rubber spatula or a wooden spoon and then lye gets really hot. So you'll need a plastic container or a stainless steel container to mix the lye in. So a lot of people ask me, how is your soap all natural if you're using the chemicals such as lye? And it's very acidic, very alkalinic. How is it all natural? So it's chemistry. When you mix lye, sodium hydroxide, with fats and oils, it has a process called saponification. When you merge them two together, it creates a new chemical, which is called soap, and it has no traces of lye in it. That's why you have to know what you're doing. That's why you have to know how much oil to put with the lye so that there's no trace of lye in it. So even if you go and buy a soap mold that says lye free or no lye in it, lye was used to create it initially. It's just there's no trace of lye after the saponification is ready. So how that lye breaks down is your oils. Now, all soap has to have two oils. It has to have organic olive oil in it. And that's gonna be your bread and butter is your olive oil. And it's also gonna have refined coconut oil. Now those two oils have to be in all soaps. Not too much coconut oil because it can be drying for your skin. Now on my soap, I add two more oils. I add jojoba oil and I add organic castor oil. Anytime you use any ingredients that dries the skin out, like ingredients that's for acne, you wanna put a heavier oil in it so it can balance out those drying acts. And so when you combine those oils with the lye, Saponification, 48, 72 hours, there's gonna be no trace of lye in it, no chemicals in it, and that's what makes it all natural. Now that you have everything that you need to prepare your cold processed soap, we're gonna do the first step and the most dangerous step, which is to prepare your water lye solution. So, to prepare your water lye solution, you wanna first make sure you put it on your goggles. Now, there's fumes that is gonna make once you pour your water and your lye together, so you wanna make sure that you're not doing this without goggles. So you wanna go ahead and put your goggles on. All right, as I said, you need chemical resistant gloves on. So I'm gonna slip them on. Make sure they're not just covering your hands, but your arms as well, because if it splashes, you're gonna be burning. All right, so the most important thing is to get the measurements precisely. So first we're gonna measure out our lie. And I'm gonna cut my kitchen scale on. Once you put your container on, you're gonna put tear on your kitchen scale to zero it out. And for this measurement, I'm not gonna tell you guys how much I'm using for my recipe. You guys have to just look and see how much you need for your soap recipe. So I'm gonna... All 
Okay, has to be to the money with how many grams that you're using. So my lye is weighed out. Now I'm gonna weigh out my water and then I'm gonna put them together. To the side. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a little hint and a little clue. Once you mix lye with distilled filtered water, it's gonna be really, really hot. Like I said, it's gonna to get to 200 degrees. So you can do a cheat. You can put ice water to cool it down faster. So I have a cup here of ice. I'm gonna clear my kitchen scale out. Okay. All right, and then I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to get it to the grams that I need. Perfect. Okay, if it's too much or too little, you're gonna have to adjust it because it has to be to the T. All right, I'm gonna give my ice water bath a little stir. Now, you're always gonna want to mix, put, pour your lye into your water. You're never gonna wanna put water into your lye. It's gonna make a big volcano eruption if you do that. And you're gonna wanna add it very slowly. So, stand back. And you're gonna put a little bit in, stir it around. Put some more in. Last part. Y'all make sure you're getting every single drop of that lye so that your soap can come out precise. Okay. Now it's already really hot so my um, ice has completely melted. The trick with lye is to keep mixing until it runs completely clear. So I'm going to see if you guys can see this. So right now it's cloudy. I'm going to keep stirring it until it runs completely clear. So. It's kind of tedious. You can't leave it milky. You have to stir it until it's completely clear. It's really important that you're having these chemical reaction gloves on. Your container is going to be really, really hot. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you're protecting yourself at all time. Also, this is a really bad chemical burn if it gets on your skin or on your face. So you want to make sure that you're protecting yourself at all times. I'm just gonna keep on stirring this until it runs clear. All right, y'all, so I've been stirring about two to three minutes and now my lye water solution is completely clear. You wanna stir until the water runs completely clear. As soon as you first mix it, it's gonna be a milky white color. How you know it's ready is when it's completely clear. Now, if you were using room temperature distilled water, your water will be really, really, really hot. So it will have to sit longer. But because I use ice water bath, it doesn't have to sit as long as, but it does have to be room temperature. You're gonna let this sit at least 20 minutes. So while it's sitting, you need to make sure that you're covering the top and so you're not exposing the air with the fumes. So I'm gonna tighten this on tight and let it sit for 20 minutes. While this is cooling down, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my oils for you guys. So our lye water solution is cooling down, so we're gonna prepare our oils. This is the easiest part. The hard part is knowing how much of which oil to put in your soap. Now for this particular soap, I'm gonna go heavy emphasis on the olive oil and the castor oil and a little bit of coconut oil and jojoba oil. So for this um, recipe, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out my olive oil. And this has to be really precise, just like the lye. All right, so I have my olive oil weighed out. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my oil bowl. And this is also the bowl I'm gonna be mixing my soap in. I'm gonna put in the lye right into this oil, these oils. All right, so now clear my scale out. I'm gonna add my castor oil, which is my other thick soap. Now, if you're gonna begin your soap making process, 
you are going to want to put so many different oils in your soaps that have good benefits. The only thing about that is some of the oils do not work in comparison to the lye. So you're going to have to really, really do your research. So like, for example, avocado oil is a great oil. Olive oil is a great oil. Put them together, bomb. But if you mix a certain amount in the lot, it's not going to do what you need it to do. So you have to really research how much oil you need to put in your soap. So I love jojoba oil. It's so good for your skin, but I know that I can't put a lot in this soap. So I'm going to put a very small amount of jojoba oil in this recipe. Perfect. And as I was telling you guys, every soap needs coconut oil, olive oil and coconut oil. Now you can melt your oil down. I don't because it's going to just melt in the oils. It's whatever your preference is. And it's going to be a very little bit as well. Yep. All right. Now that I have all my oils, I'm going to go ahead and mix them together. As you're mixing, your coconut oil is going to break down. So if you choose to melt it, you can't. If you don't want to melt it, it's your preference. I'm going to go ahead and get these oils prepared. Your oils is your bread and butter of your soap. You want to make sure you're buying really, really, really good oils. You don't want to just throw coconut oil that you bought in the store in your soap. That's what you're putting on your body. It's not the same. You want to really invest in your oils. Live solution is so cheap. So make sure you're using really good oils. That's what's going to be expensive about your soap, but it's worth it. You can you leave your soap as plain as possible if you want to. I always use additives. It smells good. The benefits are wonderful. And I don't just use fragrance oils. I usually use the objects that I'm using. So because I'm making coconut vanilla soap, I'm going to add coconut water and coconut fragrance oil. So to open up a coconut is a little tricky. You're going to need a screwdriver to poke a hole in the eye. You probably need a hammer too. It depends. You might be strong enough. You don't need it, but I usually need one. So let me try. All right, so I'm going to make sure this is stable and use a hammer. All right. Got my first hole. You want to do three holes when you're opening up a coconut. All right, I'm going to go to my next spot. Didn't need a hammer for that one. And my third spot. Use a hammer for that one. Right. Once you get three holes in your coconut, you're just gonna drain your water out. So I only need a little bit of coconut water, so I'm gonna save the rest of my water for later. All right, and then I'm gonna mix in some coconut fragrance oil. This is also all natural and organic. It's just to make it smell good. So I'm gonna mix that in my coconut water just a few drops and I'm gonna just mix that together. All right, so the trick to making really good soap is to add the lye to the oil, completely mix that, and once the trace is perfect, then add your additives. So I'm just getting my additives prepared. So I'm gonna smell it, make sure it smells strong enough for me. That's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead now and mix my vanilla. Now we have our coconut fragrance oil. We're going to mix our vanilla. So you want to use some organic vanilla extract. You don't need too much. And vanilla fragrance oil. Now I usually put vanilla in almost all my soap. Vanilla is like one of the best things you can use on your skin. It anti-ages you. It slows your aging process down. So if you have fine lines, wrinkles, age spots, Vanilla works with the environment to combat and fight all those free radicals in the air. So I always put vanilla in my soap because it's really good for your skin. So, all right, I mix that vanilla up and I'm gonna put that to the side and we're gonna get ready to combine all of our ingredients and make our soap. So we have everything mixed up. We have our oils, we have our lye water solution, we have our coconut oil uh, fragrance and our vanilla fragrance. So now we're gonna go ahead and make our soap. So first, your oil should be in your widest bowl. Remember, plastic or stainless steel only. Now I'm gonna mix my lye water solution. It's completely cooled down, room temperature. You cannot put it in hot, make sure it's cooled down. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pour my lye water solution in my oils really slowly. And this is when you're going to bust out your hand mixer. So your hand mixer needs to be on low. You want to fully submerge your mixer into the bowl at the bottom before you turn it on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and give it a mix. So the most important thing about making your soap is the tracing. So your soap needs to be at a trace to how you know it's ready. So what I mean by trace is if you're mixing your soap and you run it and it doesn't, so that's a little too liquidy. So I'm going to mix it some more. So you need to catch it right before it gets too thick. So let me see. All right, let me mix it again. All right, so that's perfect. So it's like the consistency of pudding, custard. That's what you're going to want to make. All right, so because I'm making half and half soap, I'm going to go ahead and divide these into two equal parts. I'm going to go ahead and mix half my mixture in this container and keep the other half. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use my coconut oil to mix into one of them. You want to definitely do this separately. So my base is the same, my scents are different. So I'm going to go ahead and mix my coconut oil, water, and fragrance oil, what I made earlier, into my bowl. And I'm going to stir that really good. You don't need a mixer for this part. Your soap is already made. Go ahead and mix that up. While that sits a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and add my vanilla to this one. And I'm going to go ahead and mix that up. So because it is getting thick, I am going to use my mixer. All right, so it's getting a little too thick, which means it was still a little too warm. So you guys learn from that. Make sure it's completely cool, but it's fine. I've made a million bars of soap. So I'm going to go ahead and start layering it on my bottom. So if you let it be too thick, like custard like this, you're going to have holes in your soap. And you don't want holes in your soap or gaps in your soap. So this will be the bar that I use for the family. So I'm going to go ahead and start layering in my um, soap mold. And I'm just going to push it down really well. All right, finish mixing my vanilla. And because your lye and your oil ratio is perfect, you can't add liquid to it. So you're going to have to either work with your hard soap or toss it out. So I'm working with mine. All right, I'm going to go ahead and layer my vanilla. All right, I'm going to go back in with my coconut. And spread that out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and smooth this out and I'll show you guys what it looks like at the end. All right, so as I said, you need to cover your soap with a paper towel and then wrap it in a towel. It has to sit at the top elevated somewhere a pantry cupboard somewhere high up for 24 to 72 hours i always let my soap sit for 72 hours because i'm for sure that the saponification is done processing my soap so after the 72 hours you're going to go ahead and cut your soap if it's in the silicone mold you don't have to do anything just let it sit but if it's in a square wooden um, soap mold you need to cut it before you let it sit the four to six weeks now as i was telling you guys 
soap has to cure for four to six weeks. That's how it gets hard, milder, all the benefits are working into it. So once your soap is done drying, you're gonna cut it before you let it sit the four to six weeks. So I'm just gonna pop it out. And this is what the block looks like. I did a little fancy design on the top. And now I'm just gonna cut it into bars. So if you guys are not used to making soap, I suggest you measure it. I make bars all the time, so I kind of know where to cut. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. All right. And so each of your soap is gonna be ready to be made. See that coconut and that vanilla? All right, so I'm just gonna layer them on here and finish cutting them. So after you've cut your soap, it has to cure for four to six weeks. The curing part is the most precious part of the soap making process. That's why it's hard to fulfill custom orders for people. People are like, can you just create me this soap, that soap? I could, but all my soap cures from four to six weeks, which means I put them back in the box, I wrap it back up, I sit in the top of a pantry somewhere for 30 to 45 days before I even sell a bar of it. So this is my coconut vanilla soap, how I layered it the little edges on the top. I'm just literally gonna stuff it back into the soap box. Now that I've cut the bars. I'm gonna wrap it back up with my paper towels and I'm gonna let it sit for 30 to 45 days. So you cannot enjoy this soap until next month. That's all you guys. That's all you need to do to make your cold process soap. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching me make my cold process soap. Like I said, I really enjoy making all natural organic soap with the best qualities. So if you guys want to purchase my soap, you can go to my website, cardicay.square.site. I'll put that in the description box below. You guys can follow me on my Instagram, cardicay by Enam. Follow me on my Facebook, same Carter K by Enam and I'll see you next time.